Welcome to the topic on HCC TV. I'm Todd Duplantis. Thanks for being here today. We've got a great show lined up. We're talking about 50 years of HCC. We'll meet some of the people who have been here for a good amount of that time. Before we get started, I want to remind you, if you're watching us on the cable channel, make sure you check us out on social media. You can find us under Houston Community College District across all social media platforms. Most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll get notifications when we post shows like these. We also have audio podcasts of all of our programming, and you can download them at hccs.edu slash podcast. We're going to get started in talking about 2021. It's the year that marks the 50th anniversary of HCC. Throughout the year, we'll be speaking with some of our HCC family about their journey within the college. In this episode, we'll be speaking with some of the remarkable women who have contributed to the growth of HCC. First up, Dr. Cheryl Peters. She is the Executive Director of the Honors College and the Weekend College. Good afternoon, Dr. Peters. How are you? Good afternoon. I'm just fine, Todd. Good to have you with us. We've talked before a bit about your journey at HCC. Why don't we start from the beginning for you? Maybe you can tell folks when you joined on board and what were you first doing here? Okay, well, actually, uh, in the spring of this next year, I will have been here 50 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, 11 of those were as an adjunct. I came uh, aboard full-time in 1983 and spent the, the great majority of my career as an uh, as administrator, started as a faculty member, but as an administrator at the Central College. And I spent 30 years at Central and I really feel that that was sort of my home college during the time. I now work at the system. I'm very pleased to do the work that I'm doing at the system, but I've been here a, a, a very long time and I've so appreciated my whole career at HCC. It's been great. When you first started as an adjunct, I, rem I imagine that was before we had dedicated buildings for the college. And from what I understand back in those days, you guys operated out of uh, all types of locations to deliver classes? Mostly at night in the high schools. I've taught at so many different Houston high schools in the evening, spent a lot of time at Sharpstown, but I, I, I've spent time at many, many other campuses. And I have a really good sense of what the uh, campus structure was like. And I was looking for an opportunity to try to move my work to, to the daytime. And that's why when we really put a big investment in the Central College and um, started doing things there, I really worked to get myself there so I could work during the day. I was a mother at night. And, but uh, it, it's just, a, it's been a wonderful career. And I, I was very invested for 30 years in what went on at Central College. Before you got to Central College, back in those days when you were teaching at uh, various high schools, was the student body very similar to as it is today? Has that changed over the, uh, over the years? Actually, I believe it has. I had absolutely fabulous students in the earliest years, and I'm, I'm, I'm amazed when I look back at how good they were. They always came to class prepared. They always read their assignments. They turned their papers in on time. They didn't have the kind of distractions of social media that students today have. And um, I found them to be really wonderful students. And I enjoyed all my early work, uh, even though the facilities were horrible in many cases, but the students uh, then were, were really quite wonderful. And, and high schools also were preparing, I think, students better. Right. Who, the ones who came to community college were honestly better prepared to, to do the work than many of the students we're seeing today. Being that the classes were at night in the beginning only offered at night, was that because the students were working all day and holding up full-time jobs? No, it was primarily because HCC didn't own any facilities at that time. Wow. And when we started the, the, the college in uh, you know, along with HISD, they voted to not give uh, any funding to the college. And that meant that we just use 
the high school facilities in the evening. The only day work I did, we had a program. It, it was a predecessor of dual credit. It was called College Option. And that's when you would go in the high school during the day and teach the college course to current high school students. But now, you know, the, the new word for all of that that we're doing is dual credit and it's different. But it's merely because we didn't own very much in the right. early days. And HCC was more or less an offshoot of Houston ISD at that time, correct? Yes, absolutely right. In 2015, you uh, moved to the district offices and you oversaw the expansion of our Innovative Honors College. That holds a special place in your heart. Maybe you can talk about that. I totally, uh, it, you know, when, when people like me are getting close to retirement and you kind of try to think, well, what is my legacy contribution? I always hope that I will be uh, remembered uh, as uh, I like to call myself the mother and the grandmother of the Honors College because you get to a point when you talk and interact with these uh, young students that you realize, wait, I'm their grandmother's age, not their mother's age. But I say the word mother in, in, in the best possible way because um, all of these students, as we get to know them, they, they sort of become your surrogate kids. You keep up with them. I'm, I'm still in touch with literally hundreds of students through social media, and they tell me continually about what's going on in their lives, their careers, their children, their marriages, their, how they're moving up. And these students were highly successful. So we started in 2006 at Central. Right. We were the first location. And then uh, when, when Chancellor Maldonado came around, he came to one of our end of year luncheons the second day he was here. And he got to see uh, what we were about. And he told me, even on that day, he said, this program needs to be expanded. And we have moved right along. In 2016, we opened Spring Branch and Stafford. Uh, in 2018, we replaced a new director at Central because we had a retirement of uh, a gentleman who had been kind of my partner, David Wilcox. In 2019, we opened the East Side Campus. And this fall, we're going to open uh, an, uh, an Honors College location at the North Line campus. And I really have to give uh, Chancellor Maldonado huge credit. He was crucial and pivotal to the expansion. Uh, we knew what we were doing. Right. We, we have a very... Uh, uh, a, a wonderful program of, of, of both cohort learning, of leadership development, and international travel. And we've replicated that every place we've been. So we're expanding our footprint to offer many more uh, students around the city of Houston the opportunity to access this wonderful program closer to home for them. And real quickly, in 2018, the Weekend College <laughs> was awarded with a Star Award. Maybe you can tell us about that. Yes, that is also a program. And I've seen myself in, in of late in the last years as really a program developer. It's something that I enjoy doing, building something from scratch and getting some standards in place. But we started this uh, in 2016. I knew that we could do this program and I worked with a team of people, but effectively we, we looked around and said, we need to have something for working adults where they come Saturdays only, where they can finish a two year degree in two years because we put them on a pathway. We, we've uh, shortened their courses and literally in two years of being a part-time student, you can get a degree a total 60 hour degree. And we had in that cohort, very, very uh, high completion and success rates. And honestly, Todd, I have to say it, I knew when I was writing that, you know, submission for the Star Award, I thought we are going to get this award because <laughs> this program paid off in every way. And I, I've oftentimes told students and laugh with them, I said, you know, this is the Honors College, all the best practices from the Honors College, but not in a selective admission. You know, it's for everybody. And the year we received the award, we were the only college in the state to receive the award. In the past 20 or 21 years that the coordinating board has been giving that award, 
it's usually off, uh, won by two or three colleges together. It's a shared first place. We were the sole and only winner because we had a highly successful program and we're still going on and I might add to finish up that we are now expanding the locations for weekend college. Uh, primarily we had only done it at Central, but this fall we're opening uh, classes both at the West Loop, Missouri City, and East Side. So we have a, a program of documented success. Dr. Cheryl Peters, we appreciate you joining us and talking about your career and your accomplishments at HCC. Thanks for being here today. When we come back, we'll hear how HCC got down the beat. Stay tuned, we'll be back on the topic right after this. Hey world, I have a quick message. It's about safe driving. All right, let's go. Anytime you're driving, have the seatbelt buckle tight, both hands on the wheel and your phone out of sight. We're not in your hand trying to text somebody back because if you do, your car might get smacked. The moral of the story, just put your phone down. The people on the road will stay safe and sound. Put your phone down, put your phone down. People on the road will stay safe and sound. Yeah. <laughs> The faculty at HCC represents the best of Houston. Whether your goal is a four-year college, a better job, or a whole new career, come learn with us. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. Welcome back to the topic on HCC TV. Once again, if you're watching us on the cable channel, look for us in social media. You can Follow us on Twitter, find us on Facebook, and of course, YouTube. We're under Houston Community College District. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notifications when our new shows are posted. We have audio podcasts available for all of our programming, including this show. You can find us and download the shows at hccs.edu slash podcast. We're celebrating HCC's 50th anniversary in 2021, and also today we're celebrating some of the women who have contributed to its growth. For the past 12 years, Chief Entrepreneurial Officer Maya Dernovo has been shepherding HCC's small business programs, and she joins us now to talk about some of her proudest achievements. Good afternoon, Dr. Novo. How are you? Good afternoon. Looking forward to joining you. And yeah, so happy I, to have heard Cheryl Peter's yeah. wonderful story because we worked together at Central. So Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. You guys spent a little time together at Central College? We were at Central, absolutely. Just in the beginning, in the 1990s, when the colleges split into individual colleges before we sort of came back the way we are right now. So, yeah. Tell us when you first started with HCC and what was your first role? So my first role was actually working on a TRIO grant in uh, special services way back in the 70s. And, and what's really interesting is I started on a grant. And then as my career progressed, I started writing grants. And now you know, have a greater role in that because it's in, enabled us to provide funding for, for small businesses and for the, for the entrepreneurial work that we're doing right now. So it's interesting how what, what began sort of has carried through all the way. And let's bring us up, everybody up to speed with what we're doing right now with the entrepreneurial program. It really has expanded in, you know, by leaps and bounds. I know just since I've been on board, uh, since 2012, you guys have grown exponentially and you have a number of competitions and plans that people can get involved with. Right, and we began in 2008. It's really been for the last 12 years, and we began with a grant from the chancellor at that time, and it was called the Chancellor's Innovation Grant. It was $100,000. That's what we started with, and right now, if you add all of the grants that we've secured between then and now, it comes to a little bit over $15 million. Wow. And that includes things like the, the Goldman Sachs program, the Minority Business Development Agency, Wells Fargo, uh, a lot of local uh, programs. Texas Workforce Commission has given us some, some funding, the Economic Development Agency. So we've gotten a lot of funding and have really been able to do a lot 
to impact the small business community. I think that's the thing that I'm, I'm the proudest of is that we've really been able to help start and grow businesses in underserved community, minority owned businesses, women owned businesses, micro businesses. That's for the the person who is just a one person operation, right. but that person has been given some really good tools. And this year we just started a program for veteran owned businesses. So we're really expanding our reach. And you have an entrepreneurial center now that uh, people can actually get involved with. I know uh, recently I was helping you guys out with the uh, small business plan competition. Um, right. You guys have had so many graduates from that program that have successful, thriving businesses. And a lot of them still come back and say, hey, I'm only doing this because HCC helped me out along the way with their program. Right, and they say they support other small businesses. We've actually had 375 small businesses participate in the business plan competition. And it all started at the Northwest College and we expanded the Centers for Entrepreneurship. We now have one at the Southeast College and at the Southwest. So there are three directors of entrepreneurship Entrepreneurship, and the plan is to have a fourth one for the Northeast College. So that's that's in the game plan. Right. And then, of course, the the grant programs and the corporate college. All of that comes under the entrepreneurial umbrella. Maybe you can talk a bit about the corporate college and bring people up to speed and what that's all about. Absolutely. So the corporate college is all about providing training for small businesses. So the team can actually go out and provide on-site training and whether it's leadership or technical skills or manufacturing skills, it just depends on what, uh, what the business needs. Um, so they're really doing, doing very, very well and actually have some funding to help businesses because of the COVID-19. Right. Um, so businesses can actually get some assistance through that to provide training for the small business owners in the business. You know, back to talking about small businesses, one thing that uh, I had heard a lot about, and I know you guys promote this as well, when you have the small business or the business plan competition, it's not necessarily who wins the competition because from what I hear from the participants, they learn so much by just being in the competition. Right. They don't have the winning, it's just gravy, they do. Uh, but right. it's really the experience and the mentoring and all the people you bring on board to help them grow. Absolutely, because there are five training sessions. So that's where they learn about how do you manage the financing and what's the marketing and what's the operational plan? What's the strategy for, for growing it forward? What's the competition? So they, they get a, an instructional program and they get one-on-one -on -one mentoring and that combination plus learning how to pitch. How do you present your business, right? And then how do you ask for funding? So they learn all of that. And whether they win $12,000 or $1,000, it really doesn't matter because they've learned all of those tools and those skills right. to help them grow, grow that business. Now, I know HCC recently won a grant from Wells Fargo for women of color to help them start and grow their businesses. But to help, or, you know, supporting women entrepreneurs is not new for HCC. Maybe you can tell us about that. Well, my own personal history goes back to the 80s when I ran a program called Women Support Services, and it was also Women in Transition. Where, and that was the time when a lot of women were coming back to college. So we did a lot of programs to help them orient themselves to getting an education because we know that once, once you have an education, you're going to get a better job. Your income is going to go, go up. So I, I did that for seven years and really helped thousands of women come back to HCC. So now getting a grant that's going to help a minority owned businesses really learn how to start and grow the business plus learning how to access the funding because that's really tricky and that's one of the things that we're really going to focus on in this particular grant so it doesn't start until september one so just F fyi uh, we have a little bit of lead time because i will right. be hiring some staff to to actually lead that initiative exciting stuff dr maya Dernovo, our chief entrepreneurial entrepreneurial officer are here at HCC. Thanks for being here with us this afternoon. Good to see you. All right, when we get back, we're going to take you back to the 80s here at HCC. I'll tell you what was happening. Stay tuned to the top. 150 over 90. 180 over 111.
160 over 110. I had a stroke. Your blood pressure numbers could change your life. Lowering them could save you from having a stroke. If you've stopped your treatment plan, restart it, or talk to your doctor about creating one that works better for you. Start taking the right steps at manageyourbp.org. Now I'm, you know, trying to get better, stronger than ever. When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this, like, deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 The faculty at HCC represents the best of the city. They're committed to getting our students to their goals. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. Welcome back to The Topic on HCC TV. I'm Todd Duplantis. If you're watching us on the cable channel, make sure you join us over in social media. You can find us under Houston Community College District. We're across all social media platforms, including YouTube. You can subscribe to our channel and get notifications when our shows are posted. We're also have, we also have podcasts available. Download the audio versions of our shows at hccs.edu slash podcast. We're talking about HCC's 50 year anniversary. Can you believe it? 2021, we're now in the 50th year of operation. Uh, we've been talking about how women have played a huge role in shaping Houston Community College. And we've got risk manager Gwen Drumgoul joining us this afternoon. Gwen joined HCC in 1980 and her career grew right along with the college. Gwen, good afternoon. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me here. And as I listened to Dr. Peters and Dr. Uh, DeNova, I could go back and think about all the years that we have spent. We are not strangers. We're here because we grew up together. We were much younger and now we are even younger. And so we can talk about the years that we really came in contact with one another and uh, I know Dr. Peters and also Dr. Uh, uh, Meyer talked about their years at Central, but my first 20 years were at uh, 22 Wall Drive, which was the administration building of Houston Community College. And I would like to think of it as the central pulse of the system. Was that the first place that HCC's uh, assigned board or first board met? I know for a while HCC was using, I believe, HI, Houston ISD's board of trustees. Then we got our own board. Did they have board meetings there um, along Wa Drive in that building? Oh, we did. As a matter of fact, we had everything at 22 Wa Drive. It was a actually a three-story building. Uh, I was housed on the second floor and uh, all of our administrative offices uh, the, uh, for HR and all of the other offices purchasing the business office were all on the third level. And I was on the second floor. I started uh, at the college in budgeting. So when you're in budgeting, you know everything about every part of the college. And so that's how I got to know Dr. Peters and Dr. Meyer because they had to come through my office to develop the budget. And the thing about it, everything was done manually. That's what there I was, was gonna no add. margin for error. You guys were and, all writing it down and using charts and ledgers and things like that, weren't you? Well, we were. We had a budget plan, and I would go out to the various uh, locations, mainly at Central College, and everyone would come to 22 Wall Drive uh, to develop and to talk about their budget, and we would build the budget, and we had six huge volumes of pages that was prepared for each one of the nine 
board members. Wow. And there were times that we thought that we had everything that was balanced and we found that there was an error. And so what that meant of all the volumes, the six volumes, we would have to go back through there and make sure that there were no errors at all because we were small, but the same board that governed HISD was also our governess. And right. then sometimes uh, when we would not have a meeting, I think it was every other board meeting, we met once a month. And sometimes we would have meetings there at um, the, the administration building for the uh, for HISD, our police department, uh, even though we had officers at the college, uh, it was mainly governed by the uh, person who was over the police department and worked with HISD. Keep in mind, most of the uh, administrators that were at HECC, except for the instructors, were from HISD. Wow. They were very seasoned. And so they had a vision to be able to grow the college. And it was all of our jobs to see that we took the story of HCC, founded in 1971, to our community. I was even taking brochures to my church, to my sorority meetings. And all of us work marketing to make sure that we grew the college. And that was wonderful. But as I said- Recruiters and marketers, you played a number of roles back in, the, back in those days. We did. And we spent many nights there all night at 22 Watt Drive. Because if we had a job to do, we came in at eight and we might've gone home at six and was back to be able to go uh, to meet the board or whatever challenge we had for that day, we were totally committed. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have any problems. Uh, you know, everybody has problems, but the thing was we were there. It was a lot of upward mobility. Uh, they encouraged us uh, to further our education. I can remember, um, my immediate supervisor, uh, Ms. Betty McCrowan, we were in grad school at the same time. She was at the University of Houston and I was at Texas Southern and working on the MBA. And we just wanted everyone to learn and be an asset to the college. When I, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, technology's changing. I want to go back to the days when you were writing in the ledgers and you had the, the volumes of books you were bringing to the trustees. Because I don't think the workforce today, the younger people in the workforce, can imagine a time of going into an office and not having a computer on your desk. Well, that's very true because I can recall the first computerized, the CPT was computerized program typewriter that I had on my desk to be able to input uh, the budget. We had Smith Coronas, we had Remington typewriters and so forth, because that was a way of life. And so uh, we uh, knew that as time passed, we were just getting, uh, uh, developing a mainframe and to develop our budget and everything in order that we would move to the age of technology, because during that time, we still had our typewriters on our desk right. and much of our budgeting was spent on typewriters, adding machines. Now, when we started using the age of technology, we have grown so much and we have learned that, hey, our laptops, our computers are our best friends. And so we, we learned that, yeah, we learned, learned that the, the hard way at some times. And now they're our best friend and our best enemy, I guess, of technology is advanced. Gwen Drumgold, we appreciate you being here this afternoon. It's uh, always fascinating to talk with you and Dr. DeNovo and Dr. Peters. And thank you all for joining us on the topic. Of course, HCC is celebrating 50 years this year. 
We'll hopefully be around for another 50 as well. One thing for sure, I'll be back next week on the topic. We'll see you then. Thank you.